and love about it for some identity. At times we all find life difficult. We become overburdened with problems and worries. We often use these as an excuse for not turning to Christ. In today's Gospel, Christ tells us to bring all our burdens to Him and He will give us comfort, peace and strength. Let us come to Him with love and trust. Today, all Pauline fathers and brothers, we are celebrating the solemnity of St. Paul the First Hermit. Through St. Paul the Hermit, intercession we pray for blessings and graces upon all of us. Please welcome our servers, ministers, Father Peter Williams, Father Yannis, Father Peter James, Father Joshua Scott, for today's celebration. Let us stand and join in our gathering here.
let us pray. Lord God, you call Saint Paul our Father to attain holiness in the desert through his intercession. Develop in us a spirit of prayer and service to come closer to you in love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Go from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the Wadi Sheriff, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the Wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the Wadi Sheriff, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread, and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the wine. The word of the Lord.
who loved me and gave himself for me. And for those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make trouble for me, for I carry the marks of Jesus branded on my body. The word of the Lord. Please stand. in the celebration that we are having here this morning in Maryland, 
it can be divided quite nicely for us into three. Three points in history that are of great significance for this particular celebration. So we begin with the first one which takes us back to the 4th century in Egypt and focuses on a particular person, Paul of Thebes, who as a 16 year old, we are told, uh, decided to seriously embrace the Christian life. And in order to do so, it wasn't a case of adolescent exuberance. He rejected the life that he had and he took off into the desert in order to pursue a life totally dedicated to God. Paul the Thebes, who of course became known as Paul the First Hermit. When I mentioned in the Chancery this week that I was going to celebrate this feast day, one of the people who works in the Chancery said to me, I didn't know that St Paul was a hermit, I thought he was a missionary. Well, of course, there's been more than one Paul in the history of the Christian faith. So, we have the story of Paul of Thebes, who quite rightly is known as being the first to embrace what we call the eremitical life, or a life that is completely cut off from the, the then world in which a person might live. We might see it as being somewhat austere, a life lived in caves, a life where there is physical deprivation, a life devoted simply to prayer and to fasting and to engaging in the spiritual battles that everybody has to embrace during the course of their lives. We look at a person like Paul the Thebes and we wonder whether we could ever aspire to be like that. And yet, he proved to be an example when we jump to the next of our second threes, which takes us to the 13th century and the founding of the religious congregation under the patronage of St Paul the First Hermit, which in fact took place in Hungary. And it was there that Blessed Eusebius gathered together a group of hermits and brought them together and they founded a monastery. And such was the inspiration that came from that action that the congregation of St Paul the First Hermit flourished extraordinarily in Hungary and then later spread into Poland. But throughout the course of human history, unfortunately, through various uh, times of oppression and difficulties, the original foundation that took place in Hungary began to diminish. And so the congregations and the monasteries that had been established there over time uh, disappeared. But in Poland it flourished, particularly because of the preservation of the image of Our Lady of Czestakova, an image of Our Lady which today is held in high regard and esteem by many faithful Catholics throughout the world because it is said to have been written by St. Luke the Evangelist himself. So the order of St. Paul the First Hermit then uh, flourished from its foundation uh, in the 13th century all the way through to our own time. The last of the three brings us to 2008, because in 2008, the order of St. Paul the First Hermit made the decision that they would establish a foundation here in Australia. Hence the presence today of both Father Youngish and uh, Father Peter James, and of course before them Father Albert and Father Damien, who came here uh, after the death of Father Rod Bray to assume leadership of this parish community. So, as I said, good things come in three. St Paul, the first hermit, Paul of Thebes, uh, in the fourth century. And then, in the 13th century, we have the foundation of the order itself inspired by him. And then, of course, in the 21st century, we have the arrival of the order here in Australia. It has been a great blessing 
particularly to the devotees of Our Lady of Cheskakova and those who have travelled down to their monastery in Penrose Park. In doing my reading for today's homily, I realised, of course, that our brethren here, both Father Yamish and, and Father Peter James, are in fact not like uh, Franciscans or Dominicans. They're not friars. Although you might think sometimes they look like friars, they're not. But they are actually, in fact, monks. They are not friars, so they are not what we call in the church mendicant. But one of the decisions of the order was that they would take pastoral care of parishes. Now, I'm not wanting in any way to, uh, uh, I'm not willing in any way to encourage uh, my two brothers here today, but of course, in effect, as monks, they really probably belong in a monastery. But can I say, we are enormously glad and greatly blessed that they have made the decision not to be in a monastery, but rather to be here in Marylands, where they can lead the people of God through sacramental administration and through preaching the gospel. And that has been a great blessing for this community and beyond. So today, Brother Yamish and Father Peter James, we particularly congratulate you on this, the Foundation Day, under the patronage of St Paul the First Term. And we pray that your congregation will continue to bless the Diocese of Parramatta by your presence amongst us here in Marylands and also for the other good works that you do throughout this nation. Now, today's readings, therefore, of course, have been specially chosen uh, by members of the Order because they reflect something of the charism, something of the lifeblood, if you like, that underpins the members of this community. The first reading to us, of course, came to us uh, from the Second Book of Kings and is related, of course, to the story of Elijah. In the particular passage we had today, Elijah is fleeing from his enemies. He's being pursued uh, by King Ahaz and Queen Jezebel because he dispatched of the prophets of Baal. And instead of being rewarded for having driven out false prophets, his enemies were pursuing him with a mind to kill him. And so he flees out into a remote location in order that he might come under the protection of God because nobody else was going to protect him. And so we find, of course, that here God does answer his prayer and he's miraculously fed in this remote location and sustained in his life by ravens bringing food to him. The desert has always been associated with times of trial and tribulation. We know Jesus himself after his baptism went out into the desert where he was tempted for 40 days and nights. The reason why, of course, is because out in the desert we are really alone. We are separated from that which we know and which we depend on. My brothers and sisters, it's possible to have a desert experience while living in a city. You don't need to go out into central Australia in order to have a desert experience. Desert experiences can happen even while we live in a built-up metropolitan area. We can feel desolate and alone and unsupported, but like Elijah, we have to seize hold of the fact that God, in the end, will support and sustain us and lead us through our desert experience. This harkens back, of course, to the experience of Paul the Thieves himself, at such a young age, going out wanting to embrace a life of total dedication to God and faced with all the deprivations and the difficulties that he would have had in the Egyptian desert. But he believed that God would sustain him, and God indeed did sustain him. Our second reading today from St Paul's letter to the church in Galatia reminds us that all of us who embrace Christ Jesus through baptism 
are called also to embrace the crucifixion. In the world that we live in today, we hear a lot of buzzwords about the fact that we need to be inclusive and we need to have diversity. But I want to suggest to you today, there could be no more inclusive agency and no more diversity than what we see in the Catholic Church of which we are members. Look around you in this congregation if you want to see inclusion and diversity. Because here, we come from a range of different ethnicities, a range of different backgrounds, a range of different cultural expressions. But the one thing that we have in common that unites us is that we sit under the symbol of Christ crucified. And it is because of our desire to conform ourselves to the person of Jesus Christ that we find our commonality, our belonging together as members of the Catholic Church. We don't need to invent inclusiveness and diversity. We have it here. It is expressed Sunday by Sunday when the community gathers for the celebration of the Eucharist. St Paul, the first term in his own unique way, crucified himself in life by subjecting himself to the totality of God through Christ so that he might be conformed to be like Christ. And he did it in a particular way as a hermit. But of course that's not all our callings. Some people are called to that life, but the majority of us of course are not. But that doesn't mean that we are not called to conform ourselves to the person of Christ because we are and we will do it in our own unique and different way. More diversity. The Gospel comes to us from that beautiful passage in St Matthew's Gospel where Jesus is reflecting on the success of an early mission engaged in by his disciples, where he offers a prayer to God in thanksgiving that the truth that is revealed through him and his teaching has been accepted by little people. When Jesus uses that phrase, he's not using it in any demeaning sense, but rather he is saying it is those who are open to God's word often people who are not the great and mighty who are in a position to receive that word and allow that word to flourish. And then once again, Jesus enforces or reinforces the fact that we travel this spiritual journey not alone. Come to me, all who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Lay Lay your burdens on my shoulder and you will find rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A reminder to us that the way that we sustain ourselves in conforming to Jesus Christ, our crucified Lord, is that we come here to receive that sustenance through our reception of the body and blood of Christ in the Mass. And that sustains and leads us forward in our journey of faith. So, today let us give thanks to God for the unique example of St Paul the First Termit. But let us also give thanks to God for the example that we now have through the charism that comes from the order that is founded under his patronage. But let us also give thanks for one another that we, who have made the decision follow Christ and to live out our baptismal commitment are also called to follow in the same way that St Paul, the blessed Eusebius, that the members of this order have all followed faithfully throughout the centuries. Pray God that we would be sustained in our faith. And so we say, our Lady Hope of Christians, pray for us. St Margaret Mary, pray for us. St. Paul, the first hermit, pray for us. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the 
our Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Trusting in God's love for us, we bring our needs to Him in prayer. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, our Bishop Vincent, all bishops and priests, and in a special way, we pray for Father Peter Williams, main celebrant of today's visit. May they have the courage and strength to proclaim the good news, which is a sign of contradiction to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For nations and peoples torn by conflict and war, particularly in the Middle East and Africa. May God have a new path for peace and a time of safety for all the innocent. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all fathers and brothers of the Order of St. Paul the First Hermit. May they be strengthened by your continual blessings in their ministry and follow closely the example of Christ and bear witness to his goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of Australia, that the observance of Australia Day this week will stimulate reflection on the state of the nation and advance the cause of indigenous inclusion and humane treatment of asylum seekers. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are sick or housebound, especially all those mentioned in the parish bulletin. May they experience the healing power of your love in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from the power of nature, especially all those impacted by the bushfires. May God ease their suffering, renew their spirits, and speed the assistance which they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Please join in our parish prayer.
acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We ask you, Lord, that these gifts that we are offering on the day of birth of St. Paul, our Father, to eternal love, will be received by you and become beneficial for our salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that, encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and archangels, and with all the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we are claimed. Cyprus, 
Lawrence, Chrysogenes, John and Paul's, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray to bless the knowledge and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to supper, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Anastasia and all your sins. Admit us, we beseech you. 
into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit,
body of the cross. The 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 body of the cross.
We humbly beg you that nourished by these holy gifts, we will achieve a share in your eternal glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Would you like to sit down? I feel an answer for this coming day. First of all, I could just announce on solemnity of St. Paul the first time we have an affair collection which is going to support students of Pauline fathers and brothers. We have, uh, they study here and they study overseas as well and they do in the novitiate over there. Brothers and sisters, thanks for your support. We are able to cover all expenses and costs which are connected with the study. And thank God we have a, we have a priest uh, who, uh, thanks to your generosity, uh, that they could be ordained and be good study. So now we're going to have a different collection and this is going towards students cover the study and those who are doing the novitiate. Thank you for this one. And also, uh, we have a two events at the present time. On May 29th, they're going to be ordained the uh, express in the order of St. Paul the first family. Please remember them in your prayers. It is a great celebration today. I'm sure that all Poland's fathers and brothers throughout our world are have a, they have a happy day and we are uh, spiritually with them, wishing them all the best and may always send all the family support them in the ministry. Also, I would like to use this opportunity and say a big thank you to our main celebrant today Father Peter Williams, he is well known here. I don't have to introduce to you because of many reasons. He was administrator of the diocese and he was also administrator of this marriage. And, uh, and uh, in all these positions he did beautiful and great, wonderful job and now he is Vicar General, second in charge of this diocese. But I'm sure that St. Paul is very happy for this celebration and we all our fathers are also very happy that we have a group with us today. So on behalf of our, not the biggest community, but, but a whole community, and we would like to say a big thank you for your presence and for praying for your prayers today. You see little bit differences. There is Father Peter is middle age and Father Joshua is junior. I have to say that he is junior, but it is beautiful to see young uh, people who dedicated their lives to God. Father Joshua, thank you for being with us and to wish you many, many blessings and happiness in your ministry in Canberra Golden Dice. and many people that I should, we should say thank you, but they generally say it is great day of celebration and, and we're going to have an after mass a cup of coffee, beautiful cake as well, and, uh, and with the opportunity to meet with Father Dina, with Father Josh and all of us as well. So we invite all of you to the parish center after after mass and we will have a great opportunity to talk to each other and then you know that this pastoral center was blessed by Father Peter Williams, you know, he was administrator of the diocese. So everything is working very, very well. We have a little bit few problems but we fix them very quickly and and they are not anymore. Uh, just only one announcement for this coming week that uh, there will be my time play, play group New South Wales and uh, these parents 
particularly uh, with children, with disabled children, they are going to start the meetings on the very beginning of February. More information is in the parish bulletin. Just straight before the final blessing, we ask Father Peter uh, to bless this fruits which are here, different kinds, three different kinds, and uh, they are simple of St. Paul the first heavy, living in the desert and having them every day. It's not bad for 90 years, the same, the same food, it's, it's a little bit, I think, anyway, but they didn't have takeaway shops at that time. And, uh, and uh, Father will bless them and I ask all children in the church, please come forward here. There will be special blessing upon all children because St. Paul the Hermit, he loves children so much and he, in special way, in special way, is looking after children. So if prayers are offered to, to, the, Almighty, to, to the Almighty God to send Paul the first Hermit, you will be surprised what you can achieve. Can I ask now all children to come forward? And Father Peter, can I ask you to continue with blessing of fruits and blessing of children and final blessing?
just approach and then please come to pastoral center so we can make our church in the church with open shoulder and we will have a fruit over there. Is that okay? Say yes. Yeah.